You know, somehow, I don't think this is new news to anybody, really. Even the people inside of the toxic positivity bubbles. You know, we keep hearing about those. Over 95% of players don't consider inclusivity important in gaming. And I almost feel like that's the sky is blue and the sun rose in the east today. For more breaking news, feel free to hit like, subscribe, and slap that bell because I guess these hard-to-swallow pills are going to continue coming. This is from uh, tech4gamers.com. Uh, feel free to check them out. That is Tech 4, Tech Number 4 Gamers, Little Blue uh, Owl appears to be their mascot. Check them out. Pretty helpful here. Is Abdullah Wasim here uh, helping us wrap our heads around what the gaming industry refuses to acknowledge. It says, forced inclusivity is an enemy of creativity. And uh, that's basically what Elon said. Remember, he said that uh, DEI is the death of art, so... Now, the story highlight makes it pretty easy, so we're just going to go with that for now and just springboard into the rest. So it says, a recent poll indicates that over 95% of, uh, of players don't care about inclusivity in games. Forcing inclusivity into video games has become a known culprit leading them to failure. D-E and I, now you know that's, that's somebody trying to be friendly with them, Right? Because nobody on our side does the and. But anyway, DEI has become an unfortunate trend as a gradually, uh, and, and that has been gradually gaining more pace. Yes. And so, again, that's what we're kind of looking at here. I tripped over that because I was thinking about the and. It bothers me when our side does it. I'm not trying to patrol the speech here. It just, just call it di diversity, equity, and inclusion. You don't need to do the and in there. Everybody knows the and's supposed to be in there. If we had to put ands in the middle of every acronym, you wouldn't be able to spell all the cool words that you do out of acronyms. That's the point of an acronym. It's the point of an abbreviation. Gosh. Anyway, back to the important part. <laughs> Inclusivity is an unfortunate trend that has picked up in the industry over the past few years. While having characters of different origins isn't anything bad, forcing a narrative is. Most fans shared the opinion, share this opinion as 95% of gamers voted that they don't care that inclusivity is even in gaming or not. Why this matters, inclusivity has emerged as a proven culprit that ruins the entire game. We had some clear examples of that in the last few years, including Concord, the Suicide Squad killed the Justice League game, and many more. We just had Dustborn come out that you know, was basically like a SJW simulator. You know, they have like a flight simulator. This is the one that's teaching you how to be a flamboyant SJW where you manipulate your friends and force them into doing things they otherwise wouldn't do under the threat of being exposed as a racist or some type of ne'er-do-well, uh, defined by the mob, by the way. And as you can see with this teeny tiny little thing here, this we got to work on this with screenshots. One of the things I like to do is usually when you resize the window, it'll shrink down. If not, cut the middle out. Just hop on into Photoshop and just squeeze that sucker together right there because that big old gap in the middle doesn't mean nothing. So just chop that part out and squish it together there. That way it fits nice and neat and you can blow it up so everybody can see it. Can you imagine looking at that on your mobile phone? Like there's a little blip divider there that has some squiggly line that might be a percentage who knows it's too tiny so i'm just saying in the future remember that's important but what it says here is very basically is inclusion important to you in video games and uh out of 613 respondees now this is again this is like a sample size that rasmussen would use we know on twitter you can get bigger results or x rather you know on x you can get bigger results but However they went about gathering the sample information, this is what they were able to put together. So out of 613 respondees, 583 said that they did not believe that inclusivity mattered. This came, excuse me, I'm so sorry to burp in your ear like that. You know, moments of live recording. Anyway, NeoGAF is where this poll comes from. And we've seen them show up before in other polls that aren't so favorable to our ideals about how this should work. So it's hard to tell what side's coming down on this. I'm sure these results surprised NeoGAF in the way that, like, learning that a rainstorm is coming. You know rain is possible. You know rain is coming eventually because it rains where you live. And 
Somehow you're surprised when Rain still shows up, right? It's kind of like that for them. So here we have it. I don't agree with Abdullah on this. I, I don't. Inclusivity on its face is wrong, okay? You're writing about people. If that character you created happens to be black, oh well. If they happen to be white, oh well. If they happen to be Asian, oh well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You want to know why? Because the person, the character, the human being, and the experiences that made that character even a reason to create, right? The whole point you put them together. That's what matters. I'm pointing to a very tiny like representation, like I'm spinning some 3D thing around like I'm T Tony Stark with Jarvis and stuff. I'm sorry. I have an active imagination. Sue me. So don't, 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 don't sue, please. That's, that's not necessary. But uh, <laughs> so that's what I mean about this is that don't, don't call it inclusivity because then you're calling attention to something that shouldn't matter if you're truly interested in having people from all walks of life walk together. It's very simple to do that. You don't focus on that part of them that is immutable, meaning I can't change how tall I am. I cannot change if I have a limp due to an injury. I can't change what my skin color is. I can't change what assortment of genetic disorders are active or inactive in my DNA. These things, unless they're superhero qualities, should not matter to a character. If they happen to come into your mind as expressing as someone who is black, as someone who is white, as someone who is Hispanic, as someone who is Asian, uh, Pacific Islander, however you want to put it, Indian, wherever you come from, right? If they so happen to manifest that way, great. You know the voice in your head when you're talking to that character. Nobody just sits down and they're like, okay, I'm just going to take that. Well, maybe that's how they do it at Sweet Baby Inc., right? They just, just took these things out of a filing cabinet, Dewey Decibel style, and they go, all right, uh, black, uh, karate, uh, cars, uh, family. And that's, that's, that's how they do it. Maybe that's how they put the characters together. When I create characters for my projects, like I have right here with this book, uh, The Colossals, as you can see right here. It's a comic book I made, The Colossals. Uh, this is the black and white version. I, I favor it more because I'm a manga guy, honestly. I like making comic books because the characters are vastly different than how they're expressed in manga. And then there's this. And so my characters, I talk to them. I, you know, I'm not like sitting in a room like, how are you? And then I pretend to have their voice or whatever. Just in my mind, I'm pretending what they would have back to say to me, what they would reply to the questions I have. I'm not asking, are you voting for Trump? I'm not asking them questions like that. I ask them what they do with their powers, how their viewpoint of the world shapes the way they execute their missions, that kind of thing. And their voice is not some multiple personality thing. It's just an imaginary character in my mind that's replying in a way that seems germane to the character I've manifested there, all right? That's why inclusivity is stupid, because you're instead, you're, that character you made, you have to make sure that that's a certain skin color now, that that comes from a surf, certain uh, sexual preference background, that has a certain political grievance from the real world. That's what inclusivity means, and that's why it's wrong, and that's why I disagree with Abdullah on this. I'm sorry about the aside on all of that, but I feel like that's not a conversation we have anymore. We're not trying to talk about why inclusivity as, as the the... The driving force in this is wrong. That you're not including anybody. You're, in fact, excluding a massive amount of people. Not just people who look like me, right? Not just people who look like me. People who are black. People who are Hispanic. That don't necessarily get along with being overweight, having vitiligo, and being pissed off about things that are wholly and entirely annoying to them, right? Like, just, just not things to be, like, true. Like, this immigrant song that they made in Dustborn. Who in the hell is sitting there jamming out to that like, this expresses me? I, I want to be a blight on society. Thank you for writing a song that paints me as an annoying pest in society that refuses to assimilate. Okay? That's, that's the point of that song. That's what that song is. It's reminding you that the people that are immigrants, the people that are refugees, they're just here to just annoy you and not fit in. We're here. We're not going to conform to your way of life. We're different than you. All of that, right? All that. That's what Dustborn's about, okay? That's what inclusivity is in their minds. How many people of, that don't look like me concern themselves with that and furthermore want to label themselves that? 
Who goes around like, yeah, I'm a blight on society. What's up? What's going on? I got my bus pass right here. What do you mean? I'm just a blight on society. I still follow rules, bro, but I'm a blight on society, bro. Who? What? <laughs> Come on. And this is, this is why inclusivity is dumb. Just create people. It's easy. You know people. Build out of that. If the characters you create happen to be, to be white, that's fine. They're just people. Unless you write them to burn a cross in somebody's front lawn wearing hoods and chanting all sorts of nonsense, they're not going to be perceived as racist. Isn't that strange? If you don't like frame them as being racist, then people don't think of them like that. They have to go out of their way and be like, Hey, wait a minute. Everybody on this team's white. That clearly means they're racist, even though none of the context of the story has anything to do with that. Inclusivity insists that that team has to look like a 90s Gap ad or a Power Ranger team, or you're racist. And then you've defeated the point of inclusivity on its face, as it's supposed to exist, right? So he says, now inclusivity isn't, bad, isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, it's always good to see characters from different origins, genders, and races in a game. But, that's, but what's offsetting is the forced inclusivity narrative that pushes political agendas into gaming. For context, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League, uh, introduced Mrs. Freeze in its last season. The character has a huge history in comics, movies, and TV shows, and has always been Victor Freeze, or Mr. Freeze. The idea of changing that attracted a lot of criticism. Now, again, you remember this. You rem and they went all the way, too. They didn't just, like, create a, a like, Fortnite girly figure of... Uh, Mr. Freeze with like the dome on top with like a like a the big fish dome that keeps him cool on top. I'm sorry, the coolant suit dome, right? And so they 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 went out of their way to create this hulking, overweight, angry lesbian with a Ellen degenerate haircut. Maybe a 2012 Justin Bieber haircut. I'm not quite sure. It definitely feels boy band. Let's just go ahead. It just feels like a boy band haircut. But you, that's not the character that's on screen right now. That's from Concord. I know you might not know that character. It didn't stick around too long. But um, it's Truckinator. Yeah, that's Truckinator. So uh, Mrs. Freeze, though, is still married to Nora. And Nora is still a, a, a woman. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, I just wanted to review that they didn't say anything in there about Nora being trans. No frozen wieners yet. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Don't mean to put that image in your head, but now it's there. But anyway, back to the plot here is that what this guy's talking about is moreover that the change wasn't that it it was bad. Like, again, I don't think a lot of people would have a problem with a gender swapped Mr. Freeze. Right. Let's say that that Nora, we've seen this in the comics. Nora is the one that ends up having to be the uh, cryogenic scientist and go into crime and ends up being exposed to the same chemicals that made Victor so sensitive to heat. And thus, he had to embrace the suit and put his genius to work doing what he did, you know, in order to cure her. And her motivation was the same. It was just basically like swapping out their names. That was, you know, names and bodies. That was it. That, And again, that did pretty well. I remember thinking, this is okay. I don't have a problem with Nora caring enough about Victor to dedicating her life to saving him the same way that he did her. I feel like that's like a cake topper. Like you'd want your wife to do that. I, I don't see the problem in that gender swap in that regard. But taking Victor and wholesale making him a woman is just weird. I know that like you, you, a lot of fan art does this and stuff and it's fun and it's cute. And sometimes they give him booba and it's whatever. But isn't that just a little weird? Just just do Nora. Just put Nora like that. Are you are you uncomfortable? Are you comfortable with making a man a woman, but uncomfortable depicting a married woman in a in a sexualized scenario? Is that the problem here? The respect for marriage of all things? <laughs> I doubt it somehow. But we got the, the hulking mass of Mrs. Freeze, which very much uh, mirrored, uh, I think it's, uh, this is Truckinator. I'm not going to bother with the character's name as Concord named her. Uh, this, is, this is Truckinator. This is Truckinator. And again, this embraces the same mentality of women uh, are, are not meant to be 
physically appreciated. It's not even in video games. They are flatly just looking you dead in the eye and saying, don't physically appreciate these women. That's what Mrs. Freeze is. That's what Truckinator here is, okay? That's what the clear point of all of it is. They're not trying to necessarily disgust you, right? That's not necessarily what their first goal is. It's in there. Don't get me wrong. But the other thing is, is that they are wholly and entirely dedicated to breaking the idea that women are sexual creatures in any shape, way, or form. Okay? Because somehow we just can't accept that women are part of the animal kingdom with men. I don't understand, you know, we're 50-50 on this earth, but somehow one side of the equation is completely out of tune with the natural order. I don't get it, but that's fine. People have to find a reason, you know, they got to find a reason to get up in the morning. Apparently destroying nature is just too good of an opportunity to pop, to, to pass up. But the other thing I wanted to point out about this before we moved on is that I thought about this for a long time because I went and I renamed all those characters and people had a fun time with it. Some of the names have stuck like Truckinator, Melted Bionicle, Mortal Grandma, uh, Unwed Asian Auntie. Some of them stuck. Meth Elf. People really like Meth Elf. But um, I was thinking about this and I was like, that's why. Because they had so many lady folk involved in this, they got jealous. They got jealous of pretty lady characters and like somewhere out there, a man would be appreciating that female character and not the creator behind it. And you think that's stupid. You think that's stupid. But I, I went with a guy. I was running with a guy. He was telling me about his girlfriend and she lost her mind at him because he thought the yellow Power Ranger in Power Rangers RPM, that was the one, the post-apocalypse kind of terminatory. They were stuck in a dome. It was, it was, it was okay. It, it didn't suck awfully bad. But anyway, um, the Yellow Ranger there, I forget her name now, but uh, he thought she was hot. And this woman was apoplectic. She was just flame out the face, raging at him. He had to stop watching Power Rangers. I want you to really think about that statement. A man... Full-grown man, grown-ass man, just watching Power Rangers on Netflix. Like, this looks cool. Hey, they're fighting the Terminator. That's kind of neat. Oh, my girlfriend's mad at me because the Yellow Ranger's hot in this one. And you know, you know that time and time again. If you've, if you've been with any lady folk in the past and you've had an interest in a celebrity and you express that... Boy, don't you get some kind of cold shoulder right after that instead of saying, no, honey, I, those celebrity women, they get chosen because they're easy. You're the prettiest one, dear. I, no, no, no. That, that Christina Hendricks lady, she knows what she wants out of Hollywood. I, I have no idea what's going on under her neck, under her chin, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to whack that. But yeah, no idea what's going on under her chin. It's all eye contact with me, honey. All eye contact. Nope, not into any celebrities whatsoever. Yet they'll go on and on about how hunky Chris Hemsworth is, how great our DJ is, how great Chris Hemsworth Hemsworth's, uh, Chris Evans's ass is. All that. All that. And without flinching, right? So you know who I'm talking about. It's not all women. It's not every last female on the planet, okay? Don't worry about that. I'm not trying to lump everybody together here. But in particular, it's these really snippety ones, right? Really snippety ones that don't like it when you maybe maybe look a little too long at the cashier, huh? Maybe, maybe you're being a little too friendly with the gal that scans your peaches, huh? Hmm? And that's the kind of person that found their way into making Truckinator, found their way into making Mrs. Freeze, found their way into making games. Because they can't stand a hot character maybe being hotter than them. This is why it confused me about that Star Wars Outlaws girl. You remember that, right? The, the actress that played her and why she was like, how dare you want a character to be sexualized? Because she's hotter than the character she's playing. Of course she doesn't want the character to look better. Think about that. That character's never going to age. Nobody's going to play the game anyway, but when you go and take a look at Star Wars Outlaws 20 years from now, if they don't delete it, you know, like they did Concord, but, you know, if you go back and take a look at that 20 years from now, that character's still going to look like that. That lady, not so much. Not so much. Father Time takes a baseball bat to gals like that. So, 
I'm just telling you, like, if you really think about it, like I did, I was trying to figure out, like, why? What possessed them all to just do this? And I had, oh, yes, you didn't want the women to feel like they were being replaced by fictional characters that in no way are meant to be that. Are meant, you're not meant to marry Truckinator. You're not meant to. Sorry. And there's one guy out there that this is his thing. I assure you. There's one guy out there. This is his thing. Just one, though. There's only one. <laughs> Uh, forced inclusivity was never a problem a few years ago. Okay, so inside the industry, it may not have been a problem, okay? Definitely outside. As soon as it showed up, it was a problem. Way back before the 2010s even, it started being a problem. Ever since consultation companies like Sweet Baby Inc. emerged, this unfortunate trend has been forced into the industry, ruining many great games and studios. Sweet Baby has a bunch of notable names working with it, including Santa Monica, Xbox Game Studios, Warner Brothers, Ubisoft, and more. The influence is quite visible in their recent titles as well. Square Enix should be appreciated for being pulled out of the list. For whatever reason, Square Enix decided we're not going to play that game. And that was okay. I guess, you know, maybe they got wind of one of the Sweet Baby Inc. employees deciding that it was, uh, it was hammer time. It was hammer time for the gaming industry. I'm sure you remember this. This is, just came out a couple of weeks ago, though. But uh, this is a former um, Sweet Baby Inc. employee. You see right over here, Sweet Baby Inc. on fire. And uh, they're doing their fun little PowerPoint thing because who uses PowerPoint in 2024? Like, what are you doing? Like, if you're in an office environment that's still using PowerPoint, like, seriously, just, just question what is happening. <laughs> anyway, so they got their neat little bullet points here, and they're like, what do we want to do? What do we want to do with Sweet Baby Inc.? Well, we want cooler stories. You know, more vitiligo, more overweight, sassy black women, because black women love to be presented that way. As a monolith, in fact. There should be no other, right? You can't have a black woman unless she's got vitiligo. I'm, per I'm probably saying it wrong. I'm really not trying to be bad about that. But unless she's got vitiligo or she's overweight or she's sassy or all of the above at once, definitely. Like that one character in Dustborn. That's right. I'll remember the names of these crappy titles for the rest of my life. You bet. I won't remember a damn title that I actually liked. You <laughs> Wait. So it says, well, we want cooler stories. We want a safer world, one without people like me. White men are the most dangerous people in America. You remember, you remember. Burning the games industry to the ground. Well, gosh, that would include Square Enix now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Why do we get fired, guys? What happened? Why do we get fired? So anyway, Square Enix removed themselves from this. One of Sweet Baby Inc.'s uh, employees admitted they wanted to burn the industry to the ground. Well, I just, I just showed you that part. And then there's, you know, he was explaining there's like big budget games that are destined to fail so long as they continue working with this company. So that brings us to Halo, which was the part of the story that you tuned in for. Now, I'm sorry, this is quite a bit of, bit of a setup, but I wanted to make you like aware that in light of Halo Studios releasing the trailer that had all these fancy graphics, ooh, uh, ooh, Unreal 5, Ooh, wow. <laughs> Master Chunk, that's who that is, Master Chub. Chief's put on a little bit of weight. He's uh, looking a little hefty, looking a little hefty there. Good old Chief. He's, uh, he's pulling an extra, extra 20 pounds there. And who couldn't forget glowy thing in the middle of alien planet landscape, you know? And, uh, well, hey, there goes a whole truckload of tears from Sweet Baby Inc. on their way to the tear refinery to be made into a fine tear wine for you and I. So please feel free to hit like and subscribe. And we'll continue to track the tear shipments as they go by, tanker load by tanker load. But uh, back to what's happening right here instead of what's blasting past my house at full speed. Um, Halo Studios released all this Unreal Engine stuff in their trailer. Like, ooh, ah, oh, look at this. Unfortunately... A lot of Unreal 5 stuff looks better than this when it's fan-made. This is a studio that made this stuff and decided to show the world, and it's like, yeah, it might have looked cool in 2015, but not now. This is kind of like, eh. This is like a League of Legends loading screen is what it looks like. It doesn't, I'm not getting any, like, next-gen 
coming soon feeling from it. And the other thing is, it's like, who could remember? Who doesn't remember flood infected glowy thing, right? And then glowy thing on alien surface, like I said, in a master chunk. And I just, it's one of those things like, I think it was best pointed out by, uh, by a Halo post here. And so it was Pirate Nation capturing uh, some information from uh, 4chan. Here just a couple of days, here just yesterday, in fact. And so this poster says over here, Anonymous, good old Anon. And he says, uh, Halo is officially dead. It's got a picture here of uh, Miss Boone. We'll get to know her in just a minute. And it says, Halo 2013, Halo is about Master Chief's personality. Halo 2015, Halo is all about being competitive. Halo 2019, Halo should be an open world live service F2P. 2024, Halo 1 was only good because it had good graphics. Our new game will have good graphics, so it will be good too. Wow. Wow. But that's, a, that's the thinking behind what's going on with all these fancy graphics and why Master Chunk is looking so robust here. You know, we got to go with those realistic body types. You know, he's a seven foot four man, so eight foot, almost eight feet tall, right? He's almost eight feet tall. And uh, yeah, you know, he's got to fill him out there. He's too heroic in his body type. We got to make sure he's Master Chunk. But... I don't know. We'll have to see what it looks like when it comes out. But uh, in the meantime, let's learn more about the chief or master chief of staff at the new Halo Studios. Now, this comes from, from Cabrutus. You remember him. He's the guy that started the Sweet Baby Detected and now DEI Detected website. So here we are. This is Melissa Boone. And this was before she was upgraded to chief of staff. So this is her profile before that. And so she says, here she is, she says, Melissa, all right, so obviously not written by her, it says about, and then Melissa, okay, so that's cool. So this is Melissa joined Xbox Research in the summer of 2015. After earning a, her BA in psychology from Spelman College in 2008, Melissa went on to complete her PhD in social psychology and public health from Columbia University. Her research in public health focused on how people's social interactions influenced her risk for HIV and substance interactions influenced their risk, rather, their risk for HIV and substance abuse, particularly with African Americans and Latinx folks. She didn't use the X, she used the KS there. So, uh, you know, obviously this is dated. <laughs> LGBTQ plus people and women, but also how these people's personal resilience could be developed and supported to help them avoid poor health outcomes. This has a lot to do with video games. This is a lot to do with video games. I'm glad that Xbox decided that they needed to have this kind of thinking involved with video games. It's going to help. Melissa did a stint conducting market research in video games, which was so uh, so fun. It inspired her to take the leap to the game to the games world, to the games world, not the gaming world, the games world. Woo! Anyway, Melissa currently Melissa manages research across several Xbox franchises and experiences, including Ninja Theory, Compulsion Games. Double Fire Studios, and the Xbox Store. She also leads research in diversity, inclusion, and accessibility across Xbox's games and experiences, with a focus on making Xbox a place where everyone has fun. Unless you're white. And straight. More specifically, if you're straight. In her free time, Melissa enjoys games of all kinds. Video, board, card, and tabletop. I'm going to guess mobile games just kind of left out of there for, you know, consistency reasons, right? I'm sure there's no Candy Crush, thousand hours of Candy Crush going on there. Not at all. This is a hardcore gamer. This is, I mean, just look at her. This is a hardcore gamer. That's, that's that lady right there, you know. That's a hardcore gamer right there. She's got the hoodie. You know, with the thing on it. Because, you know, who doesn't wear a hoodie with the thing on it, right? And it's the double color hoodie. It's not even the solid color hoodie. Because 
only lamos wear the solid color hoodie. We've got to wear the multicolored hoodie with the thing on it. That how, that's how they know we're gamers. And then there's just a regular old t-shirt on underneath there because we're gamers. And that's how gamers just gamer, right? I feel like there was a costume department that was like, oh no, what are we going to do? <laughs> what does a gamer look like? Quick! So we'll go back here. We'll find out what Melissa does in her free time here. And so, so when she's not playing all these games, because she's just, she's part of the games world, you know, the games. And uh, when she's not mashing buttons, oh, wow. Mm, you want a button masher running things. Bidding five and a possible. I'm not sure what that means. Bidding a five and a possible. I'm not sure. Is that like some Timu talk? Is that, I don't know. I don't, I don't bid impossible, I guess. Or uh, trapezing through the forbidden realms. You can find her curled up on a rainy Seattle morning reading fantasy or speculative fiction. What the? F or anything, really. Listening to music or out enjoying great, the great outdoors of the Pacific Northwest. Look at all that that had to do with video games. Look at all that passion for video games. Look at all that. I, I grew up playing all this. I was inspired to get into games by this. No, it was just a well-paying job, bro. It was just a well-paying job. But you might wonder, like, you know, you heard about some of that psychology mumbo-jumbo. What, what went on at Columbia University? Well, she has her PhD in sociomedical sciences and sociopsychology, so that's neat. Helpful for video games. Uh, she's got a BA in psychology. Also helpful in video games. Uh, she was a director uh, at Minds Matter for writing and critical thinking. Okay, that's that's got something. She's got a writing coach. Okay, that's cool. She did that. That's neat. And then, uh, oh. Oh, okay. So she was a user researcher. Oh, we saw that in her profile, right? Okay. And then she was a principal UX researcher. I'm, I'm assuming that's like a user cross-platform thing. That's what that's most supposed to mean. And she says, uh, I manage a team of researchers covering many of Xbox's first-party games, services, and devices. I've worked on a little bit of everything, keenly invested in research on diversity and inclusive design, and efforts to bring more diverse voices into the games industry. The games! It's so... I, I just understand it as gaming. The gaming industry. I, why... why do, what's the matter with that? Is there some... Is it now some kind of phobic thing to call it gaming? Is that excluding people who don't... Gaming? They're not... They're not the gaming type. They prefer the... Ga they're the games type. I'm the gameser. That's what I do. I'm the gameserist. Anyway... And then all of a sudden, uh, from principal UX researcher, formerly user researcher, all the way up to chief of staff of Halo Studios. Wow. Wow. And that was April 2023. Congratulations. Yeah, just about a year ago. And then they come out with this and show us, like, in that time, we've managed to put Master Chief into Unreal 5. Most of us can just do that in an afternoon, but it took them about a year, a little over a year. So it's good for you guys good just doing stuff with your time. But you know what else is cool? Taking a long time on video games, bragging about all the inclusivity. Pronouns are apparently pretty cool to Melissa because there you go. There's some pronouns. And thank goodness her opinions are all her own. Otherwise, I don't know what we're going to do. Oof. The big oof. The yikes. The yowzers. The yuppers. Whatever the soy boy inflection is now. And so here's Melissa Boone at the Ruby Valkyrie. Now, please don't go out and cause any mayhem for this person. We're here to laugh at the bizarre choices this person has made and arguably what Microsoft has made for bizarre choices. So it's not, there's no reason to go out and provoke these people because it gives them exactly what they want. A reason to go out and complain. We saw this with Moses Isley or Moses, whatever the hell her name was there from Kenobi. As soon as somebody sent her something negative, could have been sent from Disney's own people just to provoke the conversation. Then, of course, there was that one character there. Um, oh, I forget her name that sent that one about uh, skin color. It was legitimate. Anyway, that weird one. I forget her name. But anyway, 
that's they jump at the opportunity to make that about race rather than the conversation at hand. So just don't bother. Don't provoke this person. If you see this screen name out and about, avoid it, I guess, you know, but just there's no reason to give this person what they want. And so this person is saying this. Melissa says this. She says, hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a user researcher at Xbox. I've been in the industry for three years. Currently, I work on Minecraft and also on diversity, inclusion, and accessibility in gaming. I studied psychology at Spelman and got a PhD in psychology at Columbia. Hashtag Black Game Dev Weekend. I don't know what any of that, like, I... I don't know how psychology helps you make video games. I don't. I just, I don't. We're not, you're not dealing with something. Halo, for, to begin with, Halo's not a game that's meant to challenge your philosophies. It's not meant to challenge your worldview. It's, you know, if you really tear the veneer back on, on Halo, it's, it's the Iraq-Afghanistan war in space. I Think about it. What's Master Chief doing? He's fighting a theocracy. That theocracy is you know, pretty motivated. They've got some people there that are pretty, pretty invested in what the Covenant's up to, right? Pretty, I can't say the word on YouTube, but you know what I mean. They, they go kablooey, you know? Got some of that going on. Then you have, like, you know, a prophecy. You have prophecy. And then, uh, then you have external forces that have a greater technology influencing things, causing trouble. Then you have an exiled group that just comes out of nowhere and starts creating trouble for the uh, USNC. Yeah. So, that, it, it, you know, uh, I'm not sure how psychology really helps because it's not, you're not sitting there trying to psychoanalyze Chief. It's pretty straightforward. There's aliens that think their god is commanding them to do things, and they've done something that is inexcusable by any god's measure. So, you know, I just, I, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. We don't need a psych, like a PhD in psychology to kind of render out what the conflict is here. But, you know, far be it from me, I guess. I, I'm not one of those people that sits around trying to psychoanalyze video game characters. It may surprise you to know that Sonic does, in fact, like chili dogs, kisses humans, gr human girls for whatever reason, because that's weird, and uh, doesn't want to be with Amy. There's really not much more to that. Oh, and he likes to go fast. Most importantly, he likes to go fast. You feel free to psychoanalyze all that, but at the end of the day, that's, that's it. Sonic's, Sonic's a cool guy, likes his friends, and that's about it. Psychoanalyze it if you want, but that's it. We'll move on, though, because, again, along with Melissa's introduction into this, there also is going on with the Halo Infinite. Now, you remember with Halo Infinite, uh, things were going really great. Everybody was super excited about having a Fortnite-style arena shooter kind of uh, player versus player situation. First-person shooter Halo arena battle game. Uh, I played a little bit for a little while. It was kind of fun. Um, I got bored of it because, like, I, I'm i the guy that likes to look at stuff. I like to go into video games and look at things. I'm the boring player. I go into Minecraft. I just look at stuff. I don't I don't create a lot of mayhem, uh, you know, and that's, that's, you know, so I'm a different kind of player than who they're aiming at, but they definitely missed the mark as they went forward because, again, all these rainbow skins became available just like they were in COD. All these different diversions into celebrating all the LGBTQ and inclusion holidays started becoming the focus of the account. What a surprise. Along with Destiny, along with Bungie, all these characters started losing their minds about Trump and all these that. So, you know, you see how this is going. And then we go out into the wild world of uh, sports here, right? We go out into the wild world of uh, what's going on with this woman. Remember her pronouns? And guess what? We'll check it out. She's a supporter of that guy. Now, I get her opinions are hers. She's got her own private social media, and she's doing what she's doing. But I don't know. I feel like uh, that might not be what you want to do. Just saying. Given, given the world and the way that it exists today, it might not be what you want to do. I'm just that guy, though. Okay, I'm purposely being being vague so that YouTube doesn't know what I'm talking about without analyzing the page. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if this video gets dinged because we said naughty things. So anyway, you might be like wondering, like, okay, so that's just her, right? Obviously, there's people who work on these games that actually care about Halo. You'd be wrong about that. 
Uh, this is one of the producers that works on this game. Uh, apparently, this is a creative designer. I haven't been able to independently verify that. This guy's kind of locked down his stuff a little bit since everybody got feisty with him. But uh, apparently, way back last year, this fella, who is now the producer in Halo Studios, had this to say about guns. He says, I honestly don't think I could work on a game that glorifies fantasy, modern, uh, glorifies or fantasizes modern guns. COD, Battlefield, RB Sex. I've had moments I've struggled with Halo, but the weapons and world is pretty sci-fi, which creates a large enough separation from reality. Yeah. This guy's afraid of guns and he works on a Halo game. Let that sink in for a minute. Just try to picture going to work every day if you're afraid of spiders and you happen to work at Spider Inc. And all you do is just touch them. And they're just around all the time. They're just hanging in your face like, what's up? I'm a spider. You just got to live with that, even though you're arachnophobic. huh? Seems like that wouldn't be a place you'd want to work, right? You know, you, you wouldn't want to be a place where, you know, you wouldn't have to spend like 12 hours a day in a place that just it pushes all your buttons, right? It makes you fear for your life, makes you think about death, question the philosophy of other human beings, you know, the legitimacy of their lives and whatnot. Probably wouldn't want to hang out there. But, you know, Nick, he, he doesn't think like that. Nick's got different ideas about the world. Let's, uh, let's, let's go on and find out more about what Nick thinks. Uh, Nick wants to make sure that all those people who lost their jobs at Bungie, which, by the way, were mostly the uh, administrators, the HR people who were basically forcing all the agenda. Yeah, Nick's like, yeah, why don't you come on over here? Why don't you come on over and be part of our group? You can join uh, Halo Studios. You come back. Come back to us. Right, because Bungie was the, originally the the uh, Halo creators, right? So, but uh, we also note that Nick here, he's got uh, his his views are also his own, and he's got his pronouns there; those are vital. But you can see right here, it says producer at Halo, and uh, you'll note that he has the uh, Pride flag, uh, the trans flag, and the uh, flag of Palestine there. So. Um, you know, by their colors, you'll know them, right? By their colors, you'll know them. And, uh, you know, even Jeremy got in on this, right? Even Jeremy got in this. And he's like, the next Halo update is going to be a <laughs> Fortnite map, right? You're just going to, next Halo games is going to be a Fortnite map. But this, again, is probably just a screenshot from when Chief joined Fortnite. And I just, I don't know, guys. You just have to ask yourselves, right? You have to ask yourself. At what point? Do the video games matter to anybody in these corporations? It's not the people at the top because they're inviting people like Melissa Boone that have nary a focus in gaming, not really up on what video games are, you know, more focused on who is in the video game as opposed to what they're doing in it. Right? And their bosses are aware of this. This person's boss is aware of this. Her boss knows, put her in that position. For that reason, it's not like she hit it at any point that that was her focus. So when does it become a priority, the video game? When? Where? Who is the last buck? Apparently, nobody. Apparently, it just might just be just like what happened with Assassin's Creed, where there's nobody at the wheel. They're just doing things. And stuff's getting put together, and there's nobody there to say, hey, don't do that, or hey, put that over there. Nope. Could be like that. Could be like Cord Concord. Where everybody's just a pleasant little ball of sunshine and nobody says no. Nobody questions anybody's decision. And so a game that makes zero sense, looks terrible, and rips off so many other plot lines of vastly superior franchises disappears in two weeks, right? Remember, it just disappeared in two weeks. So I don't think the new Halo game is going to be anything to write home to mom about. I don't think the new Halo game is going to be anything other than a tour of pretty vistas. Like, ooh, ah, look at how those trees look so real. Ooh, ah, look at how that gun is so scary looking because the guy who designed it is absolutely petrified of projectiles. So, whatever though, this video's gone on long enough, ladies and gentlemen. Feel free to hit like and subscribe, and as always, good luck out there.